Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm joined by Dr. Jeffrey Prickett. You've been here before. Welcome yes. back to the Morning Thank Show you. with Thank the you. Homeopathy and the Natural Medicine Center. We're so yes. pleased to talk about this subject. It's one that I think has garnered a lot of interest as of late and gosh, over the years. So first off, what is homeopathy? Is it safe and is it effective? Yeah, um, it's a 200 year old system of natural mm -hmm. medicine. It uses very small amounts of natural substances that stimulate a corrective response in the body. So it doesn't actually cause the body to do anything. It just helps the body do what it normally would do naturally. Mm -hmm. It helps the body get unstuck. Um, it's, it's based on a, what's called the law of similars, which means that small amounts can be helpful to resolve certain symptoms that might be caused by large amounts of that same substance. So when you think of allergies, it, this is kind of a good example in conventional medicine. An individual who has allergies will find out what they're allergic to and then they'll, they, if they go to an allergist, they might get a series of injections of a small amount of that same substance that helps stimulate the immune system. Homeopathy is similar, uh, it, but it doesn't use injections. It uses usually either liquid or pellets. And um, it, it's, it, it also is based not on just one symptom, but on the, the whole picture. So a person who um, you know, has, say, a skin rash might come in, and you would base their homeopathic prescription not just on the skin rash, but on the whole picture, the mental emotional state, whether there's anxiety, depression, or just kind of the way they are, um, and, and whatever other symptoms they might have. Mm -hmm. So as a psychologist, you, you got interested yeah. in homeopathy. How did that yeah. whole process take place? Yeah, actually a colleague recommended it to me and recommended that I look into it. Um, when I first started learning about it, you know, there are over 3,000 homeopathic remedies. Some of them have very, a very large picture to them. They, they have a lot of symptoms in various systems of the body. And they all, many of them have their own kind of mental state, mental psychological state and symptoms. So when I started learning about the individual remedies, I saw that, you know, these, these remedies had um, uh, pictures that, and I thought, I've seen these people in my office. Mm -hmm. You mean I could have given something that could have helped them with their issues? And, uh, and the first time I ever used it was with someone who had panic attacks. And the, you know, we, we got them under control with traditional psychotherapy, but it was when I added the homeopathic that the anxiety that was kind of underlying the panic attacks completely resolved. And, and they stayed resolved for six months, came back a little bit, gave another dose of the same homeopathic remedy, and that totally took them away. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of my first exposure um, in terms of you know, how I saw homeopathy working. I then used it for many, many years, um, like over 10 years in my practice. Um, and I, and I, got li I was licensed as an acupuncturist along the way, so I could do it legally. Um, but uh, in 2003, I then had my real personal experience with homeopathy in that I became very ill. And I had neurological symptoms, I had flu-like symptoms, and we really didn't know what to make of it. A neurologist thought I had MS. Um, we did find early on that I had high levels of mercury. And then about two years later found that I actually had Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And so it was the combination of the mercury toxicity and the Lyme disease that caused my symptoms. And the classical approach to homeopathy, which uses one remedy at a time for the whole picture, didn't work. And I, I, it, it, it helped a little bit at times. But as I went through the process of healing from the Lyme, uh, and used a variety of things um, and got to a pretty good place, it wasn't until I instituted a newer method of doing homeopathy, which includes the classical approach, but then also includes using homeopathic potencies of things that I might have been exposed to, like um, you know, medications or toxins or vaccines. It, this system was actually first started by a physician in Holland um, who worked with autism cases. Mm 
And he found that he, when he added that component in and began detoxing medications or vaccines or things that these children had been exposed to, that's what brought the resolution. Sometimes classical homeopathy works with autism. And there's a wonderful book called Impossible Cure that a mother chronicled her son's recovery. Um, but Dr. Smits in Holland, when he started using this additional component, that's when he saw the results just improve uh, dramatically. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned autism. You actually treat individuals with a variety of issues. Yeah. Explain that. Yeah, um, because I'm a psychologist, um, a lot of my initial work, I, I worked with people who had anxiety, depression, even more severe psychiatric issues. Um, a lot of children, especially children with ADHD, mm -hmm. some with Tourette's syndrome. Um, so those were some of the things I work the most with. Uh, but then gradually over time, there, there aren't many homeopaths around. Mm -hmm. And so, and this was in Central Florida. Gradually over time, I started working with people who had a, a, you know, other physical issues. And then when I had my personal experience, I um, also became really interested in working with autism, with those who had autoimmune issues like MS, um, and a variety of other things too, like chronic fatigue syndrome. Those kinds of, of diagnoses that have no known cause and no known cure. So, so uh, along the same lines as that uh, CEASE therapy, uh, mm -hmm. C-E-A-S-E, -E, yes. what does that stand for and how does that add to uh, your study of homeopathy and uh, specifically yeah. the treatment of and working with those with autism? Yeah, CEASE therapy, is, it stands for Complete Elimination of Autistic Spectrum mm -hmm. Expression. And that's the system I mentioned that was developed by the physician in Holland. And uh, Dr. Smits is the one who mm. developed that term. Uh, and that's, again, using classical homeopathy, but with the additional component of using homeopathic dilutions, which, uh, again, very small doses of the substances that um, were made, uh, that are made from things like medications or toxins or vaccines. And so that, that was the additional component that I think was really important. Um, because once I started to use that method personally, I, I, didn't, I didn't need the, the Lyme herbs or any of the Lyme treatment anymore. And now my immune system handles it, you know, really quite well. That's amazing. Um, yeah, cease therapy, they, it's been used in Europe for a number of years, and they had the first U.S. training mm -hmm. uh, early last year, and I was among the first practitioners to be certified mm -hmm. in cease therapy. So, like you were saying, that, that is a relatively new uh, type of therapy mm -hmm. to to the U.S. and it's yes. something that. Uh, what have you sensed in terms of? I mean, autism is becoming a greater and larger problem for for many reasons. Yes. What has been, I guess, uh, parents who approach you, and even adults who have autism, or parents with children who have autism, what has been their response to something like this? Um, you know, I think uh, people become hopeful because mm -hmm. they see a possible answer and a, and a possible reason, you know, why this developed. I think it's, you know, I mean, it's affecting one in mm -hmm. 50 children now, that these are the new numbers. And, and in boys, it's, it's even more prevalent. It's one in 31. So, um, you know, I think they're seeing that, that there's a possible reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from a homeopathic standpoint, you know, we understand illness as being one starting with a susceptibility in the body, a vulnerability. And homeopathy can help with that. So that's one issue. The, the, then the second issue becomes you have that vulnerability. What allows that to become manifest? What allows that to turn into symptoms? Mm -hmm. And then you have to talk about, okay, what are the exposures? What are the things that the person has been given um, with the best of intents sometimes that, that have kind of triggered that vulnerability? And, and cause allow that weakness to turn into symptoms. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the, the actual, uh, I guess, utilization of these remedies, I mean, some of the issues that, that patients uh, approach you with are, are simple in comparison to others. What is the whole process of, I guess, getting better and how long does that take depending on what you have? Yeah, it, I mean, f homeopathy, uh, it, 
sometimes you get very quick results mm -hmm. uh, using uh, just the classical approach. And, and you frequently don't have to go to the whole detoxification protocol. Um, and, and so, you know, it can be, you know, one remedy and a couple of months later the person's doing much, 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 much better. Mm -hmm. um, with something that's more layered, like autism, like certain autoimmune kinds of issues, then you're talking about a process where you have to address layer by layer by layer. And, and that can take three, four, or five years. Uh, Dr. Smits, the developer of mm -hmm. Cease Therapy, said that uh, you know, most autism cases take about four years of, of consistent, steady homeopathic work in order for them to resolve. But he felt that all of these children, now these are his words, mm -hmm. he was very confident at that point after he'd worked with three or 400 cases, but he said he felt that all these children could be recovered. Yeah. That brings, like you said, so much hope to those who yeah. uh, are dealing with this on a personal level or even they have a friend or family member because, like you said, it affects one in, in 50 yes, children. children That's huge. And it's wonderful to hear uh, news like this. To see and that it's higher in Utah. Ways. Yes, yes, that's what I hear as well. So yeah. something certainly that I'm sure many would be interested in yeah. getting involved in. Yeah. So you do some work with the People's Health Clinic. Yes. How, how long have you been involved yeah. with them? Um, I started with them probably it was towards the end of last summer. And it's a wonderful organization. They offer medical services to the uninsured. Um, and they, they have conventional medical services, but there's also, uh, and this is one of the things I love about it. They allow people like me to be there, you know, who do homeopathy. They have um, uh, some chiropractors who volunteer there. Uh, they have a naturopath who does acupuncture, uh, physical therapists. They, they have a number of different types of practitioners and and we all work together um, and it's, it's just really a wonderful place to be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just you know have, have really enjoyed my uh, few hours a week that I spend there. And that's what's crazy you mentioned a few hours they work really well with your schedule because they're so pleased to have uh, individuals like you there so they're very flexible with yeah. volunteers that come in and yeah. I guess to those who are gosh in a, in a similar position in their life in their profession and they're like man I want to give a couple of hours a week just like Dr. Prickett is mm -hmm. what would you say to them in terms of getting started and, and just moving forward to serve their community even more? Yeah I would highly recommend it it's, it's one a great place to be they and they should just contact Patty P who's the mm -hmm. volunteer coordinator um, and just check into it just take a look at the facility look around talk to Patty and 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 maybe talk to others it's it's really a great place and for those who have means the the center does uh, rely on community donations mm -hmm. to offer this wonderful service to the uninsured uh, population in, in Summit and Wasatch so I would recommend they contact the center as well. Oh, wonderful. All their employees yeah. are so fantastic, yes. uh, of course, as, as well as their volunteers. But yeah. how do we get in touch with you, first off? If, if someone heard this and they're like, I want to talk with Dr. Prickett yeah. about my son's autism or, or any other yeah. issue. Yeah, any issue. Um, they can, uh, I have a website. It's uh, www.homeopathy-utah.com. All right, very good, Doctor. Okay. Thank you so much right, for joining you, us here this morning once again. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Are you going to go out and ski? I uh, am. Maybe. I am. <laughs> it's a good one. It's going to be a yes. wonderful day, Bluebird yes. Day for you out there. Well, yeah. thank you once again. Be sure to check out the People's Health Clinic for more information. They have volunteers of every type that they need help from. So we'll be right back after this quick break talking with the Youth Winter Sports Alliance.